you start canning venison? Uh, you just had to do that. Uh. <laughs> long time? A long time. I canned venison with my mother when she canned venison all the time. Oh, okay. We used to have maybe a hundred quarts of venison on the shelf. Wow. And we had a big family, but uh, we had that much venison and we canned it. We canned, we canned all of it. That was the only way that you could keep it then because there was no refrigerators or freezers or anything then. So we canned it all. And so that's been a few years back. A few. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, 60 years yeah. before, so, so yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, well that's good, that's great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rich with Hunter's Choices, and today we're canning venison. This is what we want it to look like when we get done. But we're also going to do three recipes with venison. This is just straight venison in a jar. And then we're going to do straight venison in a jar and add some beef bouillon to it. In case you have some kids that don't like the venison taste, we just add the beef bouillon and I'll take care of it. And then on the third recipe, we're going to add potatoes, mushrooms, onions, a little celery and carrots and we're going to actually make venison stew and have it canned ahead of time. So all the kids have to do is grab the jar off the shelf, heat it up and they have venison stew. You can serve it over rice, you can serve it over potatoes and you can serve it over pasta. Any of these venison recipes straight out of the jar. What my mother liked to do is she would put the venison in a baking sheet and then she'd put biscuits on top of it and we'd had biscuits and venison, biscuits and gravy. That's what we had. So today we're going to have mom doing the canning and Emily is going to assist her in doing that canning. Hi, I'm Margie McNutt. I'm Richard's mom. Hi, I'm Emily Bublitz. Okay, to start off we've got our pressure cooker on the stove with not more than two inches. There's probably about an inch and a half of water in there. And we have the lids boiled. Over here, we just brought them to a boil, leave them set in the water. We have our salt because we need a tablespoon of salt in each jar. And I wanna show you the difference in the jars. Um, this is a quart small mouth jar, and this is a pint small mouth jar. But we're going to use the quart large mouth jars. So and that's what we will be putting that's what we will be putting our uh, meat in today. All three recipes will go in the quart wide mouth jars. In the first recipe, we're just going to do two jars of straight venison. We don't have to be real careful that, that we just chuck cut it up into chunks and put it in the jars. And these have been, we did before we have some that needs to be done yet, but these are fine, just the way they are. So if they're too big, just cut them a little more? Yep, just cut them. And we wanna pack them in, not real hard, but about this much we want in each jars. Each. We want, we want this much in the jar up to right about that ring on the bottom. Do we push it down a little bit or just? Just a little. I've got enough here to finish yours too. And then to each one of these jars, we're gonna put a tablespoon of salt. You're gonna it too. And this will make the uh, juice. This will form juice in the jar. A tablespoon? Yeah. Level tablespoon? A level table. We're going to add no liquid. We're just going to place the uh, ring, lids and rings on the jar. Well, I have to wipe that. Yeah, wipe off. Should we wipe off the tops? 
Yeah, you can. There wasn't any of mine around my finger around there. And we're going to put these right into the right into the pressure cooker. See how and simple then, that was? And then we're going to get two more jars and we're going to do the the next recipe that he has which will be venison with bullion cubes. You can either use cubes or the granules granules and about let's say two teaspoons of, uh, of stuff. I'm fussy on how I like my venison in there so I trim all of this. There's a lot of sometimes garbage in there, some fat and stuff. If you leave too much fat on the on the venison it's going to come to the top of the jar just like this did but more and when you open the jar you can cut or take all of that out of there if you don't want to cook with it. I don't like cooking with it so I just take it out of the jar when I open it. She's going to put two teaspoons of beef bouillon in here. And you put that in the middle? Yep. Level teaspoons? Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to finish filling this up, but we also need the tablespoon of salt, otherwise we won't get... So the bouillon goes in the middle, but the salt goes on the top. Yeah. Or wherever you want to put it, because I think it will, it will, um, it will get, go throughout the meat no matter where it is. So we need our tablespoon of salt in here. This one is done, and then it can go right into the pressure cooker. So we're going to mark the lid on this jar with a B for bouillon, so we know this is the one with the bouillon in it. Okay, so now we've marked this with a B, and we're going to put it right into the pressure cooker with the other. Okay, but first we're going to have to trim up a lot of meat here. Here, I'm going to give you this piece because yes. this meat was last year's deer that was in the freezer. So it was frozen and now we're going to can it. How long will this meat last This meat in, in the jars? In the jars will last. I've had, uh, I've had it for six or seven years, so oh. it will last uh, unless the jar unseals so you have to just watch it but but it does last that means we can take meat out of the freezer and can it to last for years huh sure that we can do now let's just take a few carrots so we've got carrots and we'll take onions some celery Well, that looks good. And we have some mushrooms. Can you add any other vegetables if you want? Whatever you would put in stew, probably, whatever. Some potatoes? Yeah. Making me hungry. <laughs> and then we'll finish up. We'll finish filling the jar with. Now, do we add bully into this? Venison. You want venison? Well, Two teaspoons of bouillon? Yeah. 
Do we put salt in with this too? Oh yeah. You have to put the salt, otherwise you wouldn't get the juice out of the meat. Oh, so salt is what makes it salt is what make the juice. Yep. Oh. Looks good. Do we need a little more venison? Yep, we'll just need a little bit of that one. I'm sure it probably has to be cleaned up. Oh, and now we need the salt on the top? Yeah, we need the salt on. Is this non-iodized salt? I'm sure it is. That does it matter what kind of salt? I didn't think so, because it was used to be all iodized salt, and I used that all the time. So, Could you use canning salt, or does it have to be table salt? Canning salt is a much coarser and, and much more um, taste to it, so I use regular. We could try canning salt once, but I think it would come out too salty canning salt. Is that good or are you going to add a little more? I'm going to add just a little more. So once this is pressure canned, it's all it's ready It'll to be heat? ready to eat. You can just heat it up and eat it? Yep. They Anytime? Can, they can add some water to it. They can add juice to it. They can add whatever they want. They might have enough juice in it that they'll, or whatever they want to do. So, so now we'll wipe the tops of those and get them. We always want the tops clean so that the oh, lids yeah. so are the lids sealed. Will stay on. So that they'll see it. They'll stay on. And we're going to put these into the pressure cooker and we're going to put the cover on and then we will let the exhaust come out of the cover until you got a nice flow of steam and then we will put the petcock on and time it for we'll let it come to 10 pounds of pressure and keep it at 10 pounds of pressure as close as we can for 75 minutes. Now this is a pressure canner, this is right? This a canner, yes. To learn how to use the pressure canner from the beginning and to make sure it's working properly, refer to canning salmon. Okay, and then we'll set our jars right so, in there. Now the, no. This wire basket stays the in there. The wire basket has to be in there. Okay. Some sort of uh, wire down in the bottom. So Is your that jars so they aren't sitting right on the sit bottom? on the bottom, right. So then just put these right in there? Yep. We put the cover on and close it tight. Should fit on. And we will wait until the steam comes out of the petcock in a nice flow before we put the petcock on and start timing. Okay, we've got the pressure cooker with a good steam coming out of the petcock and so we're going to put the cover on and close it and then we're going to watch the temperature gauge until it gets to 10 and then we're going to start timing 75 minutes and keeping that pressure at 10 pounds. I have the stove temperature on high and as it gets close to the 10 pound I am going to start turning my, my stove down because by the time it gets to almost done we're going to be clear over on the low. So this, it's, uh, you have to really watch it close. Our pressure cooker now turned back down to zero and so now we can take the cover off. We can also remove the pet cock. I turned this right? Yeah. Toward you. Pull toward you. Ouch. Oh, that kettle's hot. This one towards me?
Now lift up the back side first. There, so you don't get all that steam in your face. Now we're just going to take the jars out and we'll show you the finished product. And because of the vegetables in here, we don't have as much meat, as much juice as what we would with just plain venison. Oh, they're still boiling. See how the, just the plain venison has more juice in it? This is the one that has the bullion cubes in it, or the beef mixed. Oh, I just heard one pop. Yeah. Two of them. Which means they're sealing. They're sealed after they pop. Nothing better than when you're canning and you hear those that pop that they're yeah. sealing. jars of and then you are that's your finished product so what, what so what would you do with these now Margie so I would take which I have not done any of the stews before but I would take this and I make stew out of it using this as the meat in the stew and then adding everything else, cooking it at the same time. The other thing I use is just, I put gravy over it and we use it over potatoes. Or we can take and I put this in a, in a kettle and I always add a, a jar of water to it. For everything that I make, I always add a jar of water, whether it's stew, whether it's, uh, for gravy or whatever. This I would take, add a jar of water to it, and put thickening in it for gravy. Then I put that in a baking dish, and I put biscuits over top and bake it till the biscuits are brown and they're done. And uh, of course, straight out of the jar is good too if you wanna just use sandwiches out of it with, with raw onion or it. And that's about the what I use the canned venison for. I had some canned venison once where we was canned like this and then they took we took it out of a jar, put it in a slow cooker uh -huh. with some of those cooking soups like beefy mushroom or golden mushroom soup and ate it over I think mashed potatoes or rice. Oh, yeah. and that was really good. And I'm sure that everybody has their own uh, little recipes that they want to add to it, but the meat is done. No matter what, the meat is done for you. And you said this will keep for oh, years. This keep, yeah, as long as it don't unseal, it'll keep. I've had it up to five or six years that I've had, and, uh, and it's still good. Well, thank you for showing us how to do canned medicine. Let's see, how many hours did we put <laughs> <laughs> Lucky this is a low-budget production. <laughs>